Hi there, welcome to this in-depth video on Fluticason. This video will cover everything you need to know. How and when to use Fluticason, what is the correct dose, but also what are possible side effects and what interactions does it have with other medications. We will cover that and many more in this video. I also made a shorter, more to the point video that covers all the essentials and easy to understand language. You can find a link to that video in the description. Furthermore, don't forget to subscribe and let's get into it. First a little disclaimer, this video is meant purely informational, this is not medical advice and always ask your doctor if you're looking for medical advice. So, the generic name of this medication is Fluticazon, but is known under several brand names like Flixotide, Briolepta or Relvolepta and is available in three forms, dose aerosols, nebulizer or as an inhalation powder and each of these forms have their own indications of use. So the dose aerosols or the inhalation powder can be used as maintenance treatment of asthma as well in adults and older children but even in young old. It also can be used as maintenance treatment of COPD and this is mostly suitable for a COPD patient with severe complaints. So they need to have a forced expiratory volume of less than 60% of the predicted value and they also need to have repeated exacerbation during the year without treatment. Then the nebulizer can be used in the treatment of severe asthma in adults or children older than 60 years and it can also be used in the treatment of an acute exacerbation of asthma in adults and children older than 4 years old. So how does it work? Fluticazon is an inhaled corticosteroid and it has several effects. First it reduces sensitivity of tissue receptors for inflammatory mediators and bronchoconstructive mediators. It also leads to the formation of proteins that inhibit the production and the release of prostaglandins and leukotrins. It also inhibits inflammatory, uh, the infiltration of inflammatory cells in your lungs and lastly it inhibits degranulation of mast cells in your lungs and therefore it decreases the level of IgE. So what effect does this have? It improves your lung functions and it also reduces inflammatory effects in your lungs. So it leads to less exacerbations during the year, uh, less bronchial hyperresponsiveness and less exercise related bronchial obstructions. So that's a whole lot of good effects. Then some advice, if you want to prescribe fluticason and asthma, always use this three-step approach. The first step is lifestyle interventions. Stop smoking, do enough exercise and weight reduction if necessary. This is insufficient. If someone has more than two times symptoms of asthma a week, start a short-acting beta-2 sympathetic mimetic. If this is insufficient and somebody keeps having more than three uh, episodes of asthma a week, then you start an inhaled corticosteroid like fluticazone and maybe in combination with a long-acting beta-2 sympathetic mimetic. If you want to treat a patient for COPD. Again, this has four steps. First step again, lifestyle interventions. The second step is short-acting bronchodilatators like ipotropium, uh, maybe in combination with a beta-2 sympathetic mimetic like salbutamol. Step three will be add a long-acting bronchodilatator. And step four is inhaled corticosteroids like fluticasone or long-acting bronchodilatators like Advr. And this is only suitable for patients who need more than one hospitalization a year uh, through their uh, severe symptoms. So how do you use it? Depends a bit on the indication. You always inhale it, preferably with an inhalation chamber. This way the medication spreads more effectively in your lungs. After the use, always rinse your mouth because it otherwise may lead to fungal infections in your mouth. And when you use it for asthma, you may have effects within four to seven days after your initial use and you will experience the maximum effect within several weeks. For COPD it takes a little bit longer, within 10 days you may be experiencing any benefits and the maximum effect is achieved within three to six months. So you need to use it a long time before you notice some results. How long can you do this or how long do you need to do this would be the better question. Probably for a very long time. Together with your doctor you will make a plan and you build up the medication dose so you reduce the symptoms you are having. 
and you always need to take your medication at fixed times. Regarding safety, there are no restrictions for driving. It's perfectly safe to drive with this medication. You can also combine it with little amounts of alcohol and with any type of food. So what dose should you take? If you want to use it as maintenance treatment and asthma, you're an adult or a child older than 60 years and you want to use dose aerosols or inhalation powder, your initial dose should be 100 micrograms two times a day. The maintenance dose is 100 to 500 micrograms two times a day. And um, this is depending on what, you, um, what the advice of your doctor is. And then the maximum dose in a day would be 2000 micrograms in case of severe asthma. For children from 4 to 16 years, the initial dose is 50 micrograms two times a day. And the maintenance dose would be 50 to 200 micrograms two times a day. And for even younger children from 1 to 4 years, the dose aerosols uh, those should be 100 micrograms two times a day. And you should always use a baby inhaler, which is a smaller inhaler, inhalation chamber. Uh, this makes it more easier for the young child to inhale the medication. Then, if you want to treat acute asthma exacerbations in adult or children older than 16 years, always use a nebulizer. You can use 500 to 2000 micrograms two times a day, maximally up to seven days. If you still need to use it after seven days, always contact your doctor to see if other medication is necessary. For children from four to 16 years, you can use the dose 500 to 1000 micrograms two times a day, again, maximally seven days. And then lastly, if you wanna uh, use it for maintenance treatment and COPD in adults, use 500 micrograms two times a day and evaluate the use after three to six months to see if you have sufficient effects. Uh, unfortunately, fluticasone can also have some side effects. Very commonly, more than 10% of all people will have oropharyngeal candidiasis, which is a fungal growth in your mouth because you do not rinse your mouth properly, and therefore you should always do that. Commonly, one to 10% of all people will have hoarseness, bruises, pneumonia or bronchitis, mostly in COPD patients. And then uncommonly, less than 1% of all people will have a hypersensitive reaction on the skin from the use of inhaled corticosteroids. And rarely we see um, fungal growth in your throat. Very rarely we see any of these, but this is really exceptional. I will not name them all. Feel free to pause the video. And if you think you may be experiencing any of these side effects, or maybe another one, always check your prescription and contact your doctor to see if your medication needs to be changed or your dose needs to be adapted. So the use of fluticasone also has two interactions with other medications. Firstly, when combined with strong inhibitors of CYP3A4, like uh, retinavir or itraconazole, this may lead to a strong increase in the fluticasone levels in your blood and therefore may lead to adrenal suppression. And we should be very careful for this. Furthermore, when fluticasone is combined with systemic corticosteroids, this may lead to hypoglycemia, which can also be dangerous. So also take that into consideration. For pregnancy, fluticasone is safe to use. It will not uh, pass through the placenta and will not be harmful for the baby or the fetus and can be used as prescribed and for lactation which is breastfeeding it's the same story it will not pass through in the breast milk and therefore is safe to use and can be used as prescribed there are no relevant contraindications found in the use of fluticasone and there are some warnings first of all um, when you see paradoxical bronchospasm or dyspnea after the use of fluticasone you should always stop the treatment and switch to another inhaled corticosteroid. Then, when um, you use fluticasone, it may lead to an increased risk of pneumonia, mostly in COPD patient, patients. And therefore, you should always ask for the risk factors in these patients, which is smoking, older age, and history of pneumonia, a low BMI, and severe COPD. And when they have any of these risk factors, you should be careful in prescribing fluticasone. Also, the use of fluticasone may lead to activation of pulmonary tuberculosis. And long-term and high-dose use of fluticasone may lead to systemic effects, 
like Cushing syndrome, reduced bone density, growth retardation, cataract, um, glaucoma of the eyes, and psychological or behavioral disorders. And this is mostly seen in children or young uh, people like adolescents. And my last slide, kinetic properties of fluticasone. Resorption is, of course, mostly done by lungs because you inhale it. The first pass of the inhalation powder is only 8% and of those aerosols only 11%. So it's not a lot. Um, the dividing volume is 4.3 liters per kilogram. Protein binding is 91%, which is very good. It's mostly metabolized by liver, by a CYP3A4 enzyme. And it takes your body approximately 8 hours to halve the value of fluticasone in your blood. So, this was my in-depth overview on fluticasone. I hope you learned something. Feel free to leave a like and a subscribe for more upcoming videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time.